Dusty Hunter, JJ, we've got Ty, we've got Luke, and we got Brock. Guys, congratulations on the release of uh, the new single, Been a Minute. You put a hook to it there, Ty, at the beginning of the conversation. I had to, I'm sorry. <laughs> it just seems way too convenient, and I fell right into that. So tell me about Been a Minute, because it's been a minute since we've had a new uh, uh, song from the Hunters, but what are we saying here with the song? Ty, yeah. I'll start with that's exactly it you know we came off of 2020 with hard dirt which had a lot of sentiment a lot of heart behind it um and we really felt that we needed something up tempo energetic and the phrase been a minute is one of those common phrases that when you go to nashville you go out east you go out west almost everybody says it without fail you you, you get into a conversation and somebody says it's been a minute since whatever and so we were thinking about it we're like that would be more relevant than ever right now because it really has been a minute for everybody since they've been able to do a lot of the things that they love to do a lot of the people that they would love to see um, whatever that might be and so um, the term just felt very relevant and we had a very unique opportunity to work alongside uh, somebody that we respect tremendously by the name of Hunter Hayes um, so everybody out there knows that name um, you know he's a creative genius and so it was it was a real honor to be able to join forces and come up with something that had a lot of energy and heading into springtime and summertime something where you could roll your windows down and just really enjoy the song and um, and once again hopefully we're able to uh, enjoy enjoy the things that we've missed for a period of time it really has been a minute. Uh, you're not kidding about that. And you're also not kidding about when you say Hunter Hayes is a musical genius, you know, terms get thrown around all the time because they sound nice and everything else. But in reality, Hunter Hayes, uh, and I'll open it up to any of you who want to come and Hunter Hayes is a musical genius. I think he, the guy plays about three dozen instruments yeah. and he's not that old. It's not like he's had 80 years to learn how to do it. No. And, and what's crazy is uh, he said that his parents, um, he didn't grow up in a mu uh, musical family at all. It just, uh, only he, yeah, only child. And his parents weren't musical. And uh, he is gifted, unbelievable. It, it, he he works on a different level. Is it uh, it's it's pretty cool watching watching him creatively work. Um, yeah, I think one of the cool things too, Ferg, is that uh, the first time we ever met him, this was pre pre COVID. We were in his home down in Nashville. And he spent how long, guys? Probably an hour just asking us each individual questions of influences of how, and we spent that time just getting to know each other. And then as we leaned into the creative process, he took all that information that he had gathered from the conversation and then said, okay, let's, let's now move in a direction. And uh, it was one of the most intentional pre-write discussions that we've ever had. It was, it was pretty neat. And obviously it had his his creativity behind it, but he wanted to make sure that in the writing and the songs that we did together, that he uh, brought elements of who the Hunter brothers are, and that it was that was kind of the the focal point of it, which is pretty which is pretty cool. So in production, yeah, he's yeah he's been he's been amazing. Yeah, yeah we now have a group chat. We're all bros. It's called All the Hunters. It was bound <laughs> to happen at some point. Of course. Yeah. yeah. I'm asleep at the switch. How did I not think of that already? <laughs> yeah. He's more than just an honorary hunter. He is a hunter. Right, uh, right. Luke, I get much more hunter than hunter. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it sounds to me, Luke, this guy's wise beyond his years. And your brother Brock just said songs. So, um, you know, we've got being a minute on our hands now. Uh, what else did you guys happen to create with Hunter Hayes that you may or may not be able to talk about? <laughs> yeah, we may or may not be able to talk about it, but yes, we do. Uh, we are currently actually even working on something uh, right now. Um, with yeah, with him. Uh, that's separate from Been a Minute. Um, we've written a few songs now with him and are uh, producing another. And so, yeah, it's uh, we got some special things coming on uh, down the pipe here that we're looking forward to. How many times do I have to ask you the question before you'll give me even more detail? Was not <laughs> if you ask any question three times, you'll, you'll eventually get the answer. Well, that's good. I'm glad. And, and that'll be fun to, uh, to uh, hear that stuff come out over the course of time. Uh, you guys, I think, have done just an amazing job. As always, I think we would expect nothing less out of the Hunters. Um, of keeping your fans engaged through a time where people needed engagement, right? You know, and naturally you can't do it in the sense that you'd like to which is you guys out on the road in front of a crowd with your high energy show 
but you guys did an exceptional job and, and sea shanties became a thing for a while. <laughs> but again, in, in the Hunter Brothers type of fashion, you guys took it to just a, a, an amazingly high level. How much fun was it to make that thing? And who wrote it? Oh man, well, thank you so much. We really appreciate that, Paul. Um, you know, one of the unique things about this season is that, um, and social media in particular, is that you still can engage with everybody that you were previously engaging with. And then in some ways, um, you know, a lot more. We've seen a lot more faces that we, we didn't actually pre-COVID. Uh, pre and so um, it is really a unique way to, to interact with everybody. And so we've really appreciated that. And the comments that come in when people will say, you know, this just put a smile on my face or brighten my day, that makes it so worth it. And so, um, yeah, sea shanty specifically. So um, received a few direct messages on Instagram from people saying, you guys need to do a sea shanty because this will make my life better. <laughs> so I took note of that did some deep diving because I didn't know a whole lot about sea shanties and then discovered, oh, this is a massive trend right now on TikTok. It's been going on since December. And there's this guy over in, I think it was Scotland, I believe, who had the Wellerman one come out. And I was sitting in front of my fireplace one morning and all of a sudden it's like the antenna went up and there was a download of lyrics that was very relevant to the Hunter Brothers specifically. And so I brought this into the guys and I said, okay, I think we should do this. And by the way, those were the nights also works really well as a, as a shanty. So I'm not gonna do one, we're gonna do two. I found this old antique barrel that mom and dad were using as an end table in their living room. They have two of them, why I don't know. <laughs> said Dusty, can you play this please? <laughs> and then we went, and then in true Hunter brother fashion, everybody started contributing the ideas where it was like, well, we could put harmonies on this. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, have a tractor roll in from this side, it's gonna be from this angle. And then it just kept building and building. We released this thing having no idea what was gonna do. And then boom, it was like seven and a half million views later, um, just to see people engaging with it in the way they did was really, really a neat experience for us. And we're just so thankful again, that um, there's ways to entertain still in this time. Cause I think as artists, you feel that obligation to entertain, to connect, to um, still move that needle forward. Cause people need it right now. Hey, Dusty, you know, that that's I'm glad Ty mentioned that big drum, the, the, the big uh, whiskey barrel and and you playing because and I'm not a musician. You guys know that um, <laughs> it's been demonstrated lots. <laughs> but so you're banging away on that thing and the noise that was able to to create and, and, and it was it was an unbelievable. Was that just an empty big barrel or, or did you guys put anything in it? Like, how, how did you get that sound out of that? Pallets, which I think, yeah, sitting on a pallet in the concrete on the concrete floor. I, there, I don't know. It's yeah. I, I don't know. I just it, I found I had to work a little bit to find kind of the sweet spots on it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> and your hands was hurt. And, oh wow, my, my I've never seen somebody play the barrel so intentionally. In <laughs> fact, on YouTube yesterday, I noticed there was a comment that came up and it said, "What instrument do you play?" It said, "Me." barrel <laughs> so you know it might you know playing the barrel might be a new trend and the ccma nominees in the category of barrel player <laughs> uh being a minute's out now uh uh congratulations guys i know that uh, you've got a busy schedule today and uh it's nice to catch up i just want to take a trip around the horn here with the five of you uh, two questions for each of you. How are your family? And I'm going to start from my left to right with you, Dusty. How is your family? And give me something positive you learned or experienced through the pandemic. Dusty, fire away. Ooh, uh, my family is doing really well. Thank you. I have uh, a daughter and two boys. My daughter is eight. My sons are six and four. And uh, they are kind of on top of the world right now because we just got our, a puppy. They've been begging us for a puppy well, since my daughter basically was old enough to talk. So uh, they are very excited about that. Um, getting lots of things chewed on. Uh, learning the challenges. See, growing up on the farm, we always had outside dogs. They never were inside. So right now, we're kind of trying to train her. And that's ah, it's kind of like having a fourth child, no doubt, to some degree. But we do love her, so it's great. What did I learn? I learned that, that uh, house training dogs is not easy. There we go. Is that positive enough? <laughs> Good enough for me. It gets you through the test. Well done, JJ. <laughs> uh, family's doing great, Bert. Thanks for asking. Um, I have three daughters, and uh, they're growing up fast. And uh, 
I think one of the things that we've learned and, and I think it's a positive thing is that you realize as the kids grow up and as they start getting involved in, in more and more things, the girls are involved in dance and, and doing piano and schoolwork and everything. I think there's a recognition of the sacrifices that our parents made for us. And uh, that's been a positive thing as we've leaned into the kids growing up. And I think we've all experienced that in a real way that, uh, you know, there's a huge respect that goes out to all the parents out there that have sacrificed so much for their kids. And there's been a real recognition of that, I think, this last year and a half. Well said. Ty? Well executed. I got to follow that up. Um, <laughs> so uh, I have two girls, two daughters, Lucy and Charlotte, and my wife, Lizzie. Um, they are doing great. Charlie was actually born just before everything kind of happened. So she's like a quarantine baby. So she doesn't really know what to do with people these days, but um, they're doing fantastic. Um, we also, I think, lost our minds a little bit and got 13 chickens. We rescued a chicken. And so learning uh, how that all works. Oh, and two goats. So I was reacquainted with my love for animals. Um, I even made an Instagram page for one of my chickens. His name is Jeb. Anyway, um, so what I have learned is probably how important it is to um, just really tie into your local community. And that's been something we've just really seen uh, in the last year. There's been artists and entrepreneurs like starting up businesses, um, just asking the questions, how do we support one another? How do we tap into our local community more and more? Um, not just on an economic investment, but uh, on a social level as much as we can and just kind of preparing for the next step. So just seeing that local communal mindset, um, just be reawakened a little bit because I think in the last few years, there's been so much travel with so many different things that it brings that awareness back to your community. And so I think that's really important for these next stages moving ahead. Luke, even from three provinces, your hair looks perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Always does. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Same with yours, Paul. Thank you. That's courtesy of the Gillette One Blade. <laughs> <laughs> but if I was going to see you guys on a Zoom call today, I, I, got, I can't mail it in. You know, It's got to be the perfect head shave. And look at you. You look perfect. How, how have you been doing? How's your family? And what have you learned? We're doing really well. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Um, so I'll follow up with the boys. Uh, and I have uh, three kids as well. Uh, two girls and one son, uh, Leah, Dash, and Brighton. My youngest is only 18 months. Um, and But everybody's healthy and doing well. And I think, uh, Paul, we talked a little bit kind of before you did hit the, the record button there uh, to start the the interview off. Um, what you said really resonated with me um, as far as just looking at the glass half full instead of half empty. Um, that's something actually my wife and I have talked a tremendous amount about just through this time. I can have a tendency, I think, to not necessarily be that way. And, um, and so uh, just really been focusing on the, yeah, the positive things and the good things and the blessings that we have every day and we get to experience. And so, um, yeah. Hey, Brock, the only... There's two guys who use a razor to cut their hair, and I and I still think that you do a better job than me. No, I'm not even close. I I I am trying to take as many tips from you as I possibly can. <laughs> my beautiful bald brother. So. so you're still taking a look at the farm from the sky, looking down. I trust you know, flying around and doing your thing. And, and if anybody, you know, people should always follow the Hunter Brothers on socials. And, and uh, but your socials in particular are always a great follow. And so uh, we want people to make sure that they give you a hit on uh, on the socials. And how have you been doing in the last year? Thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, I've been doing pretty good. Um, I'm the only one of the guys that aren't married. I do have a girlfriend. She's an amazing girl. Her name is Kristen. And uh, she loves being in the sky with me. I uh, loves flying uh, alongside with me, loves being out in the shop with me and just doing things. She's a real go getter, which is awesome because uh, uh, when we're not farming or uh, or playing doing music um, and we have our personal time, I'm usually out in the shop. And so I'm constantly learning things out in the shop. I have a 1956 truck I'm working on. I have another old restoration that, I'm, that I've been working on. And uh, so I've been doing that out in the shop, flying when I can. Uh, another little thing that I've learned is how to uh, make swans with latte art. So I've kind of, <laughs> I've, yeah, very important I, life skill. Yeah, so it's very important. It's going to serve me really well uh, for for all of my life. But I, I love coffee, and so I, I have an espresso machine, 
and uh, and so making latte art. Uh, so that's that's a little something that I've learned. See, now we're digging deep. I think you guys need to clear your schedule, and we got to keep this going. I think we're starting to learn more about Brock than we ever have before. <laughs> that's right. That's right. We're getting into swan territory. I think it's uh, this requires another deep dive, like forty-five minutes <laughs> on the other side. Let's do a podcast. This is now a podcast. <laughs> Well, boys, uh, you know, there, there's no day that's not made better uh, uh, by a visit from the Hunter Brothers. And and uh, you guys are just fun to be around and uplifting guys. And the fact that there's new music makes it even better. Being a minute's out now. Uh, Ty, where do people find the music and find the Hunter Brothers on social? Yeah, so you can check out our website, uh, hunterbrothers.com. That'll direct you to all the necessary places, our YouTube channel. Um, uh, just to fast track it, um, our Instagram page is at Hunter Bros, and Twitter is also at Hunter Bros. Facebook is at Hunter Brothers Music. And you can check out um, our new single wherever you stream your music from or wherever you listen to it from. Great stuff. Do you boys have any questions for me before I let you go? Mm. My questions would immediately go to the uh, the Blue Jays. We did a little bit of that in the pre-chat, but uh, you know, I I just really appreciate you for your support for us. How you stood behind us. I uh, I've loved all the steps along the way. Going first of all to the uh, you know meeting you at the radio station, being able to hang out at the Blue Jays games at the CCMAs, uh, seeing you. With how do you how do you continue to perpetrate incredible work on your radio station? To continue, you've won the CCMA award many times. Uh, we've witnessed that, we've seen that, and uh, you've continued to to push yourself. and And what challenges you every day in order to uh, pursue that excellence? Oh my gosh! Wow, Greg, I, I didn't know a real question was coming. Holy smokes! <laughs> I should be careful of uh, opening the floor to things that I'm not sure the answer on. Well, I will say, and and thank you for that and the kind words. Uh, 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 the team here is just uh, an amazing group, and. Uh, you know, when you, when you get the buy-in from everybody and the commitment from everybody, it makes it a real joy to come in here every day. And, and um, you know, my family's great, everything else, but when there's no part of your day that you don't look forward to, you're winning the game. Uh -huh. and, and, you know, when I'm here, I'm looking forward to going home when I'm at home and, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to coming back to work. And so uh, when I can look at, all aspects of my life that way, I really feel like I'm winning the game. Hmm. That's awesome. Oh, really. Great perspective. Oh. Um, I, I had one question for the question. What does perpetrate mean? <laughs> 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 oh, Ferg, is there anything that you've learned? I, I, I want to know that. And second question, what, uh, what's been your favorite song of the winter? Something that's kind of uh, carried your go-to your go song this winter. Wow, that's a great question because I have so many of them and, uh, you know, it's so hard for me to uh, nail it down to just one. One of the um, songs this winter that I just couldn't get enough of was Some Things Never Changed, the collaboration Dallas did with Hardy. Uh, one of those songs that's still fun for me when it comes on the radio is No Truck Song by Tim Hicks. Yeah. But, and I'm not just blowing smoke here again from three provinces. One of the songs that when it comes on the radio, I still turn it up, still catches my ear. And I love the energy is Silver Lining by the Hunter Brothers. Wow. Oh, that's awesome. Thanks. Very Thanks. Good. Thanks, Paul. Appreciate it. I that. love it. And I feel that the audience is going to feel the same way about Ben a minute. That's available now anywhere people consume music. Hunters, thanks for this. Thanks, thanks so, so much, much Paul. Yeah. Appreciate you.